，你的提问充满了对中国的偏见和所谓不知道而从什么地方来的傲慢，我是完全不能接受的。你了解中国吗？你去过中国吗？你知道中国现在已经成为人均八千美元的一个世界第二大经济体吗？如果我们不不能够很好的保护人权的话，中国能取得这么大的发展吗？你知道中国已经把保护人权列入到我们的宪法当中吗？我要告诉你，最了解中国的人权的状况不是你，而是中国人自己。你没有发言权。Heard this fucking guy pick on our journalist last Wednesday in Ottawa, and to protect his own boss this week, China's ambassador to Ottawa. Wrote an editorial in Globe and Mail to praise the progress of so-called China's human rights record. As a Canadian, I have to admit, we can't teach you anything about human rights, let alone criticizing your human rights records. If you're deaf, even on the voices of your own Chinese citizens like Liu Xiaobo, Ai Weiwei, Tanjuren, Wu Jie, and many others, I don't think we can teach you anything. It's true that. We Canadians do have some human rights issues, mainly about our indigenous people, but also towards some other ethnic groups. And so I want to apologize for all of this by saying I am sorry for the continued harm that generations of abuse is causing to indigenous communities, families, and individuals. Today I rise in this house to offer an apology on behalf of the government of Canada for our role in the Komagata Maru incident. Yes. Facing media's criticism, our leaders will apologize for what they have done and try to right those wrongs and fix those problems. Even they may not do it right away sometimes. Not like you, Mr. Wang. The Chinese citizens are probably your slaves, valuable only as you grab money or land or both from them. Who understands China? Maybe you, communist elite, would understand that. So. As a Canadian who just happened was born in Hong Kong, and immigrate into Canada because of nothing more than your own human rights records, let me address some Canadian issues which just happened related to China, your nation. One of your itineraries is to meet our newly elected prime minister. You have even demanded. According to Globe and Mail and other of our media, you detested and finally received his ten minutes of precious time. According to the same media, however, he only talked with you about an other citizen of ours who being kidnapped, awaiting sentencing after being tried on charges of stealing your state secrets. Kevin and Julia Garrett are suspected of stealing state secrets and collecting national security and military information. Their family believes they're being detained in Dandong, a city on the border with North Korea. Mr. Tudor wanted to tell Mr. Wang it would be difficult for Canada to embrace China's hope for a new so-called golden era if it continues to hold Mr. Garrick. I'm not really sure if this is a meeting you want. Obviously, we Canadians isn't really looking forward to your so-called golden era. You hope for. I would also like to address. Unfortunately, one of the issues the I Politics reporter brought up. There, are, there are no shortage of shortage of concerns about China's treatment of human rights advocates, such as the Hong Kong booksellers. Nothing. However, two of those disappeared have foreign citizenships, and one of them, the Swedish citizen, is being kidnapped in Thailand. Which concerns me. There are more than 500,000 Hong Kong Canadians, in which more than 200,000 are like me, born in Hong Kong. So we have a right. To worry about our safety. Are we forced to praise you so that we won't be kidnapped by you? We are here mostly because we like to speak freely in here, including having freedom to call you 
fucking Chinese government. Suddenly, I can't represent everyone here. Some may still like to praise you and claim something like Tibet is part of China, but I can't control their mouths. I don't even intend to do that as well. As a result, the iPolitics reporter has a question, which is not that nonsense at all. Where do they go? How are they doing? Okay to my fellow Canadians, let's be serious. As I mentioned in a previous post, we are dealing with a group of gangsters. For the sake of our benefit, I have not suggest to stop having any relationship with them. However, we should approach them with caution. This is even more important to be reminded again as Justin Tudor is planning to visit China in August, what he said last Wednesday. You know, we were perhaps uh, behaving in a way that was resembling uh, more the previous government than the kind of approach and tone that we promised throughout the electoral campaign.